Howdy, howdy. Hello. <laughs> and welcome to But It Was Aliens, <sighs> the paranormal comedy podcast where we pro paranormal activity to decide for the questionable benefit of humanity whether that activity really was paranormal. My name is Mr. Kevin, and alongside me, with no idea what we'll be covering today, is Mr. Granville Moonwalker. Today, we are covering a case suggested to us by Sarah W. on the Book of Face. Now, this episode was suggested for a side probe, but it was suggested quite a while ago now, allegedly truthfully during 2022, but we can't prove that, allegedly, truthfully, to make up for us allegedly missing this one, truthfully, I think it needs to be brought to the masses. I tried a stalk of Sarah, but Sarah is clearly a mib because I couldn't find anything. This person has no digital footprint, if you're not their friend. We'll be covering events in Hanover, Pennsylvania today, which has a population of around 17,000 people and is about 54 miles northwest of Baltimore, Maryland, Maine. Maine? Maine? I, I'm i not going to lie. I am sleepy. <laughs> I'm not going to contribute anything today. I'm going to sit here in silence <laughs> and look at you. <laughs> He's now sat there and looking at me. <sighs> no, I... There will be points where I just blank because i'm still reading <laughs> there, there will be points blank <laughs> blank 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 so all we know so far is we're covering events in hanover yes pennsylvania yes for we begin middle and conclude our tale today in maple avenue a house in Maple Avenue. Is it called Maple Avenue because it has a bunch of maple trees on it? Was it a spot where maple trees were before they chopped them down to build the houses there? Or does everyone there love maple syrup? It's the third. And I will just say that someone who said they're going to sit here quiet, <laughs> you've interrupted me about three seconds into the first section of the case. Well, it wasn't one second. Uh... So therefore, sleepy. The house was built in 19- Out of Maryland cookies oh, and no. maple syrup. He's on the energy drinks. <laughs> the house was built in 1949. 1949. I'm trying to get as much in now so that when I'm quiet later, I see. I've contributed. 1949 was interesting times as much of the world recovered from their efforts during the Second World War. It was a couple of years into the Cold War and America had a new president, Fuck Harry yeah. Truman. The house we are discussing was occupied by its first owners for about 25 years. The next owners of this house resided in the property for about 30 years. A man, a woman and a boy. The man would die of a heart attack, with the heart attack estimated to have happened about 2.40 in the morning, the man passing about 10 minutes later around 2.50. The boy went through a tragic event reportedly in the basement prior to that through mishandling a firearm at about 15 years of age. It is alleged an uncle may have done things to this boy and I won't be going any further on that. Mm. Come 2007, the next owners of the house would be Deanna Simpson, along with her partner Tom and their two daughters, one of whom was college aged and leaving the family home. I do have the names in the summary notes for Mr. Moonwalker, but they aren't hugely relevant to the story and I'd rather not name the people affected by these events. Deanna had experienced some past <laughs> trauma and both Deanna and Tom were divorced and intended to marry each other. And I think one of the kids was each of theirs. Okay. Before they even purchased the house, Deanna was drawn to the property and knew that it was meant to be hers. Deanna wouldn't even look at another house, much to Tom's frustration. It was almost as if the house wanted Deanna. 
So we've had a large number of deaths already in this house. Well, potentially, yeah. Does Diana have any form of spiritual power? Has she had a spiritual awakening? Not at this point, no. Is, and I'm not suggesting that's going to happen, but I'm also suggest not suggesting that it's not going to happen. <laughs> anything could happen at this point, but she is not a medium or anything of that nature, no. Is... I mean, you, you could say she's sensitive, but... <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, has her mother or someone in her lineage had any powers or spiritual awakenings like Not that? that I could find... I did do some digging, but I didn't do as much digging as I could have, and I'll explain why at the end. So this could be... So this isn't someone that's susceptible to things like that, or has had any experience Not someone that was aware that they were susceptible at this point. awakenings so far in their life. At this point, this person is just like you or me, only they're not... I've had a spiritual awakening, <laughs> so they're not like me. Touche. You've had several. Have I? Yes. Why don't I know about them? We'll discuss that later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is going to turn into a probe of me. Would you buy a house that somebody had died in? Not knowingly. Do you know what happened to the original owners of your house? No. Nope. Yes! <laughs> Future episode. <laughs> I would, and it wouldn't bother me at all. I'm pretty sure that previous owner has passed in this current property. Um, Right where you're sat, actually. So, my nan passed in oh, don't, her house. Don't make it serious. So. I can't make fun of it now, can <laughs> I? You can carry on. <laughs> Following the move, at first... Always happy for the Simpsons. After settling in and unpacking, Deanna began taking photos to show to the family, as you do, and in examining the pictures, things started to get a bit unusual. In pretty much every photo, there would be orbs. Deanna brushed this off as lens flare, but this kept on happening. Every damn photo had an orb or some form of apparition in it. Orbs are typically caused by a camera flash reflecting on dust or water droplets, but cameras don't always flash these days. And in paranormal circles, orbs are the beginning of manifestations of spirits of the deceased. Next, Diana would begin feeling that she was being watched. No matter where she went around the home, that feeling would not shake and Diana could not figure out why. The family had moved in with a cat, by the way. It wasn't long before that cat mysteriously became unwell and passed away. Not long after this, Diana was outside in the garden doing some gardening when Deanna noticed an older lady approaching her. The lady, with a three-legged dog, walked right up to Deanna over the fence and said, You know a boy died in that basement, don't you? Deanna turned to drop her rake and turned back around to find that the old lady had vanished. That's the freakiest thing that happens in this whole case, I'm just saying. Um, the old lady didn't vanish. She, she did. Just, she didn't. So the Simpsons house is on a corner plot, so you can see both ways. Yeah. She, vanished. She didn't vanish. She vanished. She ducked down to pick up the dog poop. And Deanna didn't notice her duck down to pick up the dog poop. Did she never come back up? She might have done, but she thought she vanished, so she just turned around and probably went back in the house. She looked all around for her. She looked all around. Did she? Mm-hmm. Do we yeah. know that? So. I do know that, yeah. You there? I've heard several accounts of this part of the story. Are you there? Yes, in spirit, because I had a spiritual awakening. Touche. <laughs> okay, so you've put two pictures in here for me. For your eyes only. And I'm assuming and those are the photos that she took to show the family. Two of many. And 
there are some orange streaks in both of them. Mm -hmm. The second one you could say is lens flare or something of light, but the first one does look a bit weird. Yeah, it's um, Donnie Darko aura like, you know, when the the stuff comes out of their chests and they follow it. Yeah. What I'm also going to say is I'm not surprised she thought that she was being watched when she has the head of a bear and the head of an elk just hung up on the wall. Yeah, so this is something that is picked up on. I haven't wrote wrote about it in the research notes, but we're seeing some the starts of some activity here and people theorise it's because there's a lot of dead things in the house and Deanna is not having any of it, but the family are quite into hunting. Mm. A lot of uh, bad... Bad vibes. Bad juju. It was around this time that the Simpsons begun smelling rather pongy odours around the house. Those smells mainly consisted of rotting flesh, piss and undefined other bodily fluids. As far as I recall, snot doesn't smell, so I assume they're referring to either sweat, poop or the human ejaculate. A fleshy smell in the paranormal world is a very strong indication of a demonic visitation. Gradually, the family began hearing footsteps when nobody was moving, but you know how it is in an old house. There are just sounds and you accept them. The doors closing by themselves were slightly more difficult to explain, but old houses have drafts. The family thought nothing of it. The next experience was slightly harder to explain. Deanna was in the bathroom and all was quiet when, as Deanna glanced past the mirror, she caught a glimpse of a very probably deceased blonde girl laying on the floor in the reflection covered in blood. Deanna went to look again, but the girl disappeared. From this point, Deanna started seeing shadows moving throughout the house. Deanna started looking up symptoms and mental health conditions, suspecting that all was not well in her own mind. Things continued for Deanna though, with a dream. Deanna, whilst asleep, saw two figures standing over her. When Deanna woke up, the figures were still there for a moment, just looking down at her. Deanna froze in terror, then as Deanna went to move, the figures vanished. Deanna started realising that she was getting cold chills and goosebumps whenever these events were taking place and while she wasn't sure at this point, Deanna started wondering whether this was because spirits were present. When the cats started misbehaving or the rest of the family picked up on weird smells too, Deanna started to take photographs. Sure enough, the weird manifestations continued. The photos I showed you earlier, Mr. Moonwalker, were actually from this point rather than the original ones. They were just little shitty orbs and weren't particularly interesting to me. Okay. When you mentioned the smells Mm -hmm. and the footsteps and things, did they check their attic to make sure that there's no squatters living up there? Yes. Did they check? Is it one of these houses where you've got... I know you've got the basement, but there's also... it has a basement. There's also room... Where you could, like, hide... The crawl space. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Um, so, like, is a homeless person just, like, sleeping in their crawl I space? I don't recall it having a crawl space. I didn't think to look. I'm trying to picture the house, and I, I can't think if the, the, the angles I've seen of it doesn't show. Okay. But the smells would come and go. I mean, they would if a homeless person is living under the... <laughs> house <laughs> oh, d- <laughs> this whole case is actually a homeless person is living in their house <laughs> not homeless anymore <laughs> this is my house <laughs> trying to stink them out an unwashed person <laughs> using excrement and everything Bob the unclean what if this is someone that owned the house before them and they were like, they got robbed out of the house somehow. They're like, I'm going to give my damn house back one way or another. Mm. <laughs> and this is their plot. It's like that film when they're living in the walls. 
I've not actually seen that. You know the one that I'm talking about. Well, I do know. Yeah, I don't recall if I've watched it all the way through, but everyone knows about it. Deanna's daughter returned to the family home from college. The daughter started experiencing experiences too. Was she spiritually spiritually touched? She wasn't. The daughter started to experience her bedroom as very dark, overly dark in fact, like something was sucking away the light, and the footsteps always seemed to be outside of her bedroom door. Kitchen cabinets started slamming shut, and when the daughter got up to investigate, the cabinets were wide open. Whilst this was obviously very bad, at least it wasn't just Deanna having these more intense experiences anymore. This was not mental health difficulty. Did I mention that this family did their laundry in the basement? Let's head down there. One day, Deanna and the daughter went down to the basement to do the washing when suddenly all the lights cut out. Power cut. It was pitch black. Finding their way out via the walls, Deanna discovered that the power hadn't gone out at all. The light switch had been physically turned off. Nobody else was around. The house was empty. The daughter had enough of this shit and moved out. Deanna contacted the minister of the local church. It was time to seek help. I'm clapping the daughter for having sense. Yeah. <laughs> How often do we say, if this is going on, just leave? Get the fuck out. Because... It wasn't happening before they moved in the house. It well, wasn't... I mean, to her. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't happening when she was at college. Mm-hmm. She's come back. It's Shit happening. is going on. Yep. Right, get me out of here. <laughs> she has the means to get out. She's got no need to stay there. She is gone. Exactly. Round of applause to the daughter. So I wonder if... All these bad vibes within the house... Are they, are they now evil and trying to in turn hurt others? Or are they trying to get their attention somehow? But they're just not sure, like, mm. how to get their attention. All right, I'm going to throw this back at you. What if it's both? Then why would you need to get their attention first unless you're just, uh, you get joy in toying with them before... What if it's not just you? Not just me as in the evil spirit or within the house? Mm Mm-hmm. So multiple evil spirits. (laughs) What have they all got to be evil? (laughs) Yeah, I was just about to say multiple spirits, some evil, some not. I mean, I don't want to put things in your mind. I'm just spitballing here. (laughs) But multiple spirits (laughs) in the house. Okay. What do you reckon the minister's going to do when he hears about this? He's going to go in and he's going to be... The power of Christ compels you! (laughs) It compels me, does it? (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) He's either going to go in... Do ministers hold seances? I mean, that was stopping them. Anyone could have had right gear. So he's either going to hold a seance, he's going to try and contact them, or he is going to perform an exorcism. Or he's going to walk in and go, nope, fuck that, I'm out. (laughs) Which would be the most concerning for you? Fuck that, I'm out. Deanna asked the minister for a standard house blessing and didn't disclose the details of the activity at the house. Bad move. That would not solve the problem. The minister, however, had clearly learned about the house from somewhere as on the morning of the blessing, they showed up alongside six deacons. Soon after entering the home, however, the minister discovered that Deanna and Tom were not married and stormed straight out of the house, refusing to help sinners. <coughs> not very holy if you ask me, but never mind. That's his way of getting out of it. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, shit, I need to turn up. Yeah, there's and something he big like, here. <laughs> I can't deal with it. I need an excuse. Wait. Out. They're both separated, divorced. 
<laughs> As the minister left, Deanna smelt burning wood. As she investigated around the house, Deanna discovered that there was a burning footprint imprinted in the hallway precisely where the minister had stood. With this, Deanna turned to a paranormal investigative team. The team tried to make contact with the entities of the home, and this only served to piss them off it appears, because activity only increased from that point. Just after that paranormal team visit, Deanna was in the bathroom when she smelt the arny smell of blood. Looking down, Deanna saw blood all over the floor and called for Tom, but as Tom entered the room, the blood disappeared. The sound of footsteps increased, as did the stinky smells, and by this juncture, people in the house also begun to feel that they were being touched by things that weren't there. Deanna would lose no less than four separate babysitters due to events at the house such as freaky footsteps, funky smells and touching. The sound of gunshots also begun manifesting. Ooh. I reckon that minister was in there. He saw that the fire was going around his foot. He's like, I was Something doesn't say. want me here. <laughs> I'm he, gone. Did he feel that and was like, right, I'm out. Or did it just appear once he'd gone? He didn't mention anything about it. He oh. was just gone and they found that where he'd been stood. So only one. Was he a only... one-legged minister? <laughs> It just started on the foot. It didn't get a chance to work its way all the way around. <laughs> as soon as he felt the outline being made, he was like, I know what happens when that completes. I'm gone. Can't believe he turned up with like six deacons. Yeah, that is very unusual. He was like, right. We are going to do the Lord's work. And then he walked in and felt that <laughs> flame on the foot and was like, I'm out felt pure <laughs> evil <laughs> the lord does a blind eye <laughs> i am gold <laughs> sinners so the paranormal team yes what were they trying to do when they were there then so they wanted to calm the spirits down basically and tell them to go towards the other side stop bothering the house go on go to the afterlife that so, kind of thing what gives them any power or <laughs> authority or anything over a spirit for that to work aren't they just normal people whereas don't get me wrong a minister's a minister aren't they like ordained mm. and have the power so of christ paranormal teams can consist of people just with experience of doing this kind of thing often there'd be a medium as part of the team what if you don't have the experience of dealing with this <laughs> then this is a bad first case <laughs> this is not how you get into this line of work and they rocked up they were like yeah we're gonna do this <laughs> and i was like shit burn and started going around their feet <laughs> no i will see you later peace out and uh, not to spoil anything but lots of teams have visited this house some more equipped than others uh, they can do it. We'll do it. Then they got fucked up. A few years had passed by this point, and it was only several years in that Tom had his first experience. Before that, Tom was calling BS on it all, did not believe it. <laughs> Tom was watching TV in the living room when one of the new cats suddenly started hissing at the basement door. As Tom looked on, he felt a cold chill before a black mist swirled up from the basement door, up onto the ceiling and then moved towards the kitchen. Mesmerised, Tom got up and followed the black mist. The mist suddenly turned into what Tom described as a slow motion tornado with arms coming out of it. The mist then growled at Tom and Deanna, who had also begun watching, before disappearing into the ceiling, leaving a black mark on the previously white ceiling. Deanna, filled with dread, took a photo of this before bolting upstairs. I'm just going to show Mr. Moonwalker this photo. Okay, that is a... Uh, hold on. 
Is that in their kitchen? Yeah. It's a very it's a strange kitchen. looking kitchen. Well, you can only see the the upper corners of the wall and yeah. the ceiling. They've got lots of photos and hunting stuff all over the walls. Also, it looks like they've got a voodoo doll. Yeah, I'm not really sure what there. that is. I, when I first looked at these, I was more fixated on the actual things being discussed, like the marks and the swirls and whatnot. I didn't really pay much attention to the bric-a-brac all around. Also, what you described was uh, the Tasmanian devil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So following that, a psychic visited the property and identified that a portal had been created in the hallway of the property. Of course, upon learning this, Diana would try to close the portal. Those efforts failed. One? <laughs> yeah. What makes her think she can close the portal? Well, that, that was my first thought. Two. How did she try to close the portal? Three. How did she find out how to close the portal? So, I've heard probably... Uh, let's just say several interviews with Diana directly at different times and news articles I haven't looked at one source that I could have and I don't know if it's in that particular source but again I'll explain that later couldn't find the detail of how she tried to close it I'm not sure whether she tried to do it herself because she was still quite confused and inexperienced by this point or whether she called in those paranormal investigative teams to do it and it was a case of feeling the energy and like psychically closing it or whether it is a blessing I'm not sure on the detail so I didn't put the detail in you say she was confused and inexperienced at this point inexperienced yeah does well, that once mean you... that she goes on to gain experience does she have a spiritual awakening <laughs> <laughs> she um I can neither confirm nor deny that she had a spiritual awakening at some point in this case I mean, once you've been living in this kind of house for a while, you're going to gain experience whether you like it or not, because I, if you ain't leaving... I don't understand why you would be living in a house like this for a while, but... Uh, I can explain that as well, and we'll touch that later. We'll continue. It isn't just the shadow on the ceiling or the burned footprint. A red footprint has also appeared near the portal in the hallway. This one turned up after footsteps in the hallway had awoken Deanna and Mr. Deanna at night. As they listened... The couple thought they heard somebody crying and headed downstairs to discover this new footprint. Deanna got in touch with paranormal investigator and medium Joni Mayen, wanting both her help and for Joni to write a book about the house, and Joni was absolutely up for the challenge. When Joni turned up, she knew that she was out of her depth. When Joni tried to enter, the house basically pushed her back outside. Deanna had another medium round too, and this medium told her that They know you want to move, save your money because they are attached to you And they will just go where you go What would you do if you were told this? I think I'd call bullshit <laughs> Simply because Why me? Um, it wasn't happening before I moved to the house but maybe so, you've moved into a place with something, an energy there already, and the longer you've stayed, the more latched onto you they have got, just because you were the one who went there, and therefore they're now going to follow you, because they are tethered. I, I would say, if you can communicate with them, mm -hmm. tell them to behave, and I'll happily just, like, go wherever they want, they can stay. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'll put out tea and cookies for them. Like, ghost cookies, ghost tea, ghost coffee, whatever they want. And there you'd be becoming experienced, see, because you're putting all these things out to learn what they like. Then you can take that experience forward. So are you saying that's what happened? She tried different she things. I'm not saying she gave them cookies, cookies specifically. <laughs> <laughs> Have a ghost cookie. Ghosties. <laughs> But, but yeah, um, a book was written on this, and that's the bit that I haven't read. I just didn't have time. 
It's apparently a really good book, though. I think if I was in that situation, that's what I would ask for. Ghost like, cookies? No. Right. If you're if you're going to be tethered to me anyway, let's be cordial about this. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? I'll, I'll stop trying to get rid of you. You <laughs> stop fucking with me. Let's just be in this together. Yeah. We're stuck together now. Let's make the most of it. I mean, why don't we just play pranks on other people? <laughs> yeah, let's have fun. <laughs> go around with a tv show called ghosties just doing Spookies, pranks on have you know <laughs> diana upon hearing that something otherworldly was after her had a laser security system fitted <sighs> this thing is sensitive enough to pick up humans but doesn't pick up cats now around february 2011 diana went out for her anniversary with her husband overnight and at 2.50 in the morning, the happy couple were interrupted by a call from the security system advising that they had an intruder. In checking the system, it turned out that nobody was in the house. It was empty. This has happened another two times since. What the frick could be setting off laser security? Well, do you remember what time the man passed away of a heart attack in the house? You mentioned it right at the beginning when I mentioned a man, lady and boy lived in the property. It's believed that the heart attack struck at about 2.40 and the man had passed by 2.50. The alarms went off at 2.50. What are the chances? Tell me, Granville, tell me. Let's add some clarity now, shall we? Deanna now believes that the house is haunted by more than five ghosts and one demon. Amongst the spirits is a man who Deanna says is unwelcome as they are a negative energy. A bad odour of cigars can be noticed when he shows up. I'm not sure if this is the man who had the heart attack or someone else and I'll explain why in a bit. There is also the spirit of a young boy who took his own life in the basement. If you started working out who the spirits actually are and verified that with the history of the house, you'd move, right? Well, Deanna and family put everything they have into the house so they can't afford to move. Moving is not cheap. To deal with it, Deanna spent the early days telling the spirits that they were not welcome and to go towards the light, but after years of this not working, Deanna has now changed to trying to make the entities welcome in hope that they'll behave. She's on your wavelength, Mr. Moonwalker. Deanna also believes that the house seeks attention and wants to scare you. Deanna has had friends, neighbours and strangers round and they've all experienced things. So just to reiterate, by this point we know these things are being experienced by many people and there have been several documentaries about this haunting interviewing witnesses do they seem honorable and trustworthy mm -hmm. i sometimes i want to believe this woman and then she just goes and does stupid shit well that doesn't mean that she's not believable it just means that she's i mean this is all new to her you can't expect her to be doing the right thing straight away lower your expectations of the world mr moonwalker i tell you what we're I... not all perfect i tell you what i wouldn't be doing right Buying a laser security system. <laughs> it's a fucking ghost. Freaking laser beams. Like, ah, but is it? She still could have been thinking that it was um, Stinky Pete under the house. What do we call the unwashed Bob? She did. Bob the think unwashed. That. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, yeah, pretty sensible. Seeing if she can get the ghost to uh, calm down. Mm hmm. I mean,. If, you, if you've got people that you know that can communicate with them, why don't you get them to communicate? Well, Find she's had teams visit. Yeah, they've Nothing's visited, working, but so now she's just trying to be nice. Has anyone actually asked what they want? Yeah, actually. Or have they just tried to get them out of the house? Probably a bit of both. But I suppose they've probably asked, what do you want for you to leave the house? Not just... What do you mm, want? Yeah, perhaps. Like, she's cool if you stay, but what do you want to just, like, 
calm to help you, down. you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why are you so cross? What can we do for you? Why are you such a dick? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you a dick? <laughs> <laughs> Unexplained why the ghosts are getting more and more angry and active. Or maybe it's some well, of the, such a dick. the uh, said bric a brac that's in the house. Maybe that offends them. Mm, the voodoo yeah. doll sitting up Quite on that. Possibly. I mean, thing. I wouldn't like to see like deer and bear carcasses and whatnot. Nope. Maybe it's that stuff. If I had paranormal powers and could zap people, that sort of thing might tempt me to use them. You may think that all I've brought you today are blurry photos, but oh no no, my friends. That was just the initial details of this 2011 case. Since then, more has happened. Roll on, 2014. A cameraman, aka photojournalist from Fox 43, named Nick Petrillo, was visiting the family to explore the story when he felt a burning sensation on his hand. As Nick looked down, a freaking scratch appeared on Nick's wrist as people watched. As people watched. Deanna obviously used holy water to stop the dark entity from attaching to Nick at this point, and we'll get onto that dark entity in a moment. But I'm just showing Mr. Moonwalker a photo of this incident, and remember, this was a journalist visit. A journalist. <laughs> So, um, what I'm seeing here is a picture of a wrist. Yep, with a little and scratch down the middle. There's not is, really much further to is add that than a that. Scratch? But quite clearly is a scratch, yes. Mm -hmm. And it's forming. <clears throat> I, I'm not too sure about that. Well, let's see if we can convince you further, because I said journalists visited. We can do better than still imagery, Mr. Moonwalker. I am presenting to you actual video evidence of this case and honestly Fox 43 have done a better job of this in 5 minutes than me in 45. If you'd like to check this little doozy on the tube of you. A home in Hanover, York County will be featured on a national TV show tomorrow. The homeowners say they're living uh, in the middle on. of a violent... Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going back and I'm starting that again. Okay. I thought I saw a door move. You you could see all sorts here, more than what they mention. A, a home in Hanover, York County, will be featured on a national TV show tomorrow. The homeowners yep. say the door just closes by itself. Mm -hmm. haunting, and they invited Fox 43 to take a look inside. This is so what watching Kairos, the, the haunting of Hill House. And, uh, Katie, Things are happening all the time. Prepared for what you saw. No, I had no idea what to expect, and I know a lot of people don't believe in this stuff, but you can take a look at what happened to it. This home looks quiet from the outside, but owner Deanna Simpson says several ghosts are haunting it, and she's caught them in photos and recordings, including this one. The majority are bad, dark forces, unhuman. Just a couple of minutes into the interview, our photojournalist, Nick, felt his wrist burning. Are you okay? Did you get scratched? He was behind the camera, but Simpson knew what had happened right away. Oh my gosh. He'd been scratched. Simpson says it's happened to her, her husband, and friends many times before. That's unbelievable. God bless you. You know why? Because you're telling the story. Because you're putting it out there. Because they don't want... That is their... I'm just telling you right now, that is their way of a warning. She took us on a tour of the house. She shot video of this door. If that is you, would you please shut that door? Oh my God. It appears to close on its own. You're, you want to scare me so bad? Show me. Shut that door. Go ahead, shut that door. Oh my gosh, I about fell to my knees. I trembled because as soon as I said it, you never think that's going to happen. Simpson says she often sees orbs on this stairway behind the door. It leads up to the master bedroom. This determines whether I sleep upstairs or downstairs. This part of the master bedroom and bathroom is an area where we've seen a lot of activity so far, and both Simpson and her cat have been pushed down these stairs before. While we stood at the top <laughs> of the stairs, Simpson recorded on her cell phone camera. She was hoping it would catch orbs. But it shows something else, too. It looks like a hand. Oh, 
What? My, did you see that? Simpson says it looks like someone she's seen before, and it's not a ghost. It's a demon. It's been seen in the basement. When it came on me, I couldn't breathe. I, I, I couldn't scream. I, I couldn't move. So far in this house, Nick has been scratched. I've been touched and pinched. We've seen strange lights on the walls and heard noises. And we haven't even gone down to the basement yet. So where is the place where you saw the shadow man picture? This photo was taken with a deer camera in the basement. Uh, this picture right here is the shadow man. Um, the shadow man. Simpson says she's scared by what's happened, but she and her husband have lived in this home for seven years. Her grown daughters refuse to stay here. We put everything into this house, and we do want his move, but we would have to list it at such a price to where we could recoup what we put in. Meanwhile, the family has invited mediums, researchers, and priests to visit the home. The results of one investigation will appear on the Travel Channel show, The Dead Files. Simpson says there's a history of grisly deaths in the house. I have to prove to people our life so that way they'd understand. Whatever you think, we weren't in a hurry to come back anytime soon. Was standing over well, this Dead Files episode on the home will air tomorrow on the Travel Channel, and there's going to be a lot it going on on that show about the history. <laughs> okay, that is bizarre. And um, this is our videographer, Nick Petrello, who, who shot that, and you're serious. You actually got scratched. I did get scratched. Um, basically, when we walked in the home, I didn't feel anything at first, and then as soon as we sat down um, and I was shooting the interview with Katie, I felt it was something like a piece of hot metal almost, just... It, it was really strange. I'd never felt anything like that before. And then I looked down on my wrist and I noticed there was a, a scratch there. I wasn't going to say anything at first. And then Deanna asked us, asked me, is any, is, are you okay? Did you get scratched? And then I, I admitted, I, I noticed that I was like, yeah, this, this actually happened. It, I, I've never felt anything like that in my life. Did, did you believe in ghosts and demons prior to this happening? I liked watching the shows, but I actually didn't really believe in it until this actually happened. I was very skeptical until this. And so, has your opinion on it, on it changed as well? well? I mean, both of you. This I mean, yes. I mean, I, thought, I didn't think anything would happen in this home. I mean, we brought a Ouija board, because I thought we'd have to bring it in. Ooh, yeah, anything happened. Bad and idea. Deanna didn't even want us to bring it in the door. She thought it would be she, it's just dangerous with what's going on in her house. And now, I mean, wow. there were just things that we can't explain that happened there. Mm -hmm. You know, she has a lot of photos of people with scratches that have been in her house before, but I never thought that was going to happen when we went inside the home. Wow, that is really interesting. How does she even sleep at night? <gasps> oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> They're trying to play a trick on us. I don't, she's <laughs> brave. She and her husband they are very flickering brave. flickering the lights in the studio. That they've just tried to come to terms with it. Um, but it's an unusual feeling inside that home. And when he got scratched, I almost thought we'd have to stop the interview and leave. We were like five minutes in. I didn't think we could stay. It was such a scary feeling. So it's pretty unusual. All right. Well, we wish her the best. Yes. Yeah. Thank you both so much for sharing your story. We'll be right back after this. That thing moved a thousand miles per hour. I'll just add, just before we talk about it, that a former homicide detective has done some digging on the house and identified that a lady was killed at the property by an ex-lover. A former owner after that, named Lydia, lost four of her children to drowning before another son died of an illness and her husband died in an accident. I'm not sure if that was the first owner, but regardless, this has been a house of misery. The door moving. So this place this is just one of several teams that have been out to visit it and do studies and whatnot they've checked for strings and all that kind of thing there's no explanation but those doors literally constantly close by themselves that is <sighs> unusual very but also i can't discount the string on the door I'd almost have to see someone on the other side of the door with it happening. Like if they were, if the door pushed closed rather than like from the other side almost. This is one of those ones where you've got to investigate it yourself before you believe because you don't trust other teams. <laughs> this is like a team have been sent there to basically disprove this case. Yeah. And check all of that stuff. I mean... Not only that, there are some very weird-looking objects in that house that, as well. Yeah, it's, they're quirky, aren't they? There's no getting past that. Like, the cat 
like is it a lamp whatever it is where the light comes out of the cat's eyes it looks like just a cat with no eyes and that's You're where the light trouble, comes aren't out. You? then you had the picture of some um the two kids mm-hmm. and the kids eyes look like they were missing i was like what, what's going on yeah here? what do you expect to happen if you're bringing all of this dodgy paraphernalia into a house of misery mm. that the simpsons believe pretty passionately and that i've seen them even more passionate in another interview they're very very consistent i was also going to say where she said uh we're going to have to list at, at something where we're going to be able to recoup no you're not and they're not going to be able to sell it is what she was trying to say there they've cut that short no uh. But they cut basically all their money's in the house. They've got nothing, so they have to sell it at a high enough price that they can pay all their fees and whatnot and get out what they've put in and actually be able to afford somewhere else. And if there was a recession around this time. Mm. So they were stuck, well and truly. That is, uh, that is rather unfortunate. Yep. It's also a quirky-looking home. Like they've, it's, they've made it look even quirkier, yeah. It's... It doesn't look like a bright open space. It looks no, quite dark in the very house. Very dark, very busy with... Um, yep. I can't think of a better word than dark, like the um, the heads on the walls and whatnot and the weird lamps and stuff. I also don't blame my daughters for not wanting to <laughs> stay in the house. I wouldn't even want to go in it. Except yeah. for to check for string. Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> We are nearing the end now, and I'm going to walk through some theories. Well, talk through. First up is that the family are lying to make money somehow. They couldn't afford to move, so not much money was made, and the fact that others have witnessed events, even a sceptical photojournalist, does make that argument slightly harder to accept, albeit possible. As we saw in the video, this family does seem to believe So can we explain this house with the normal? Orbs could be reflections, yes. Footsteps could be creaks, echoes and the cat perhaps. Shadows could be tricks of the light, an exaggeration from those who are ready to incline to believe. The cat could have passed from natural causes. The footprints could be tree rings bleeding through the wood stain. And I could go on, but how do we explain the sightings of bodies the old lady warning in the garden and the scratch. Not only that, but so many of these events have been witnessed by more than Deanna. News crews have picked up voices on their recordings that weren't there. Can we explain that? No, Granville, we can't, and you won't be interrupting. On the paranormal side, is it possible that there are some residual hauntings going on? We know that a previous male owner of the house passed away around 2.50 and seems to haunt the house. I mentioned earlier I'm not sure if the negative male presence is that guy specifically. That is because Deanna herself believes that the spirit of a murderer attached to her when she was walking through a cemetery, so she may have brought an external spirit into a charged house. Meanwhile, when the Dead Files dropped in to do an episode, medium Amy Allen warned Deanna that there were five male spirits who all wanted her dead. Is this a grumpy old man mass haunting? Deanna had background trauma and is sensitive, though not a medium herself. She could be a prime target for negative energies, including poltergeist. It could be that there is more than one dark entity because we've also mentioned a goddamned demon. Frequently, a seven feet tall, shadowy figure has been seen and we've even had permanent marks left behind by this thing. Is this where Deanna has gone wrong? Maybe this isn't a haunting at all. Rotting flesh indicates a demon and it could be that a demon has settled here gathering souls. Paranormal investigator John Zaffis, in visiting the house, warned Deanna that the thing in the house had been on the land for millennia and pleaded with Deanna to leave before it was too late. Deanna herself reported having a dream where a demon identified themselves to her as Mastima, who was the angel of disaster, a fallen angel and father of all evil, according to the Dead Sea Scrolls. A smart demon could pretend to be a ghost. 
Shadow people collect souls and it wouldn't be possible to get rid of them with the type of thing you do with a ghost or demon. These are less well known and are definitely a topic for a future probe for us, but could this explain these events? Just to bring us up to modern times, later reports I've seen suggest that Diana had protective forces in the house who were keeping the evil away more recently, and by 2023, public records indicate that the family have now sold the house, but I'm not sure what happened to them. That is the case. How much did they sell the house for? Oh, not like a ridiculous amount. <clears throat> okay. Standard. That's what I was going to check, because I wonder if they were doing a... Uh... Trying to bump up. John Fum. <laughs> so sell it for several million. Yep. Yeah, I don't think it was that kind of thing. And they were quite open from the start saying they wanted to leave, but they Just couldn't, couldn't. couldn't afford to. Do we know if the... So they've sold the house. Yeah. Has anyone moved left. in? I have tried to find out, but I couldn't find anything. It's fairly recent and there doesn't seem to be a lot out there on it. It might be that the activity is settled back down and it's going to start again. It well, took a while for The Simpsons. I mean, if it's following her. Or, or it could have followed, yeah, could have followed Deanna. Also, why do the five demons want, or five males want her dead? What's she done? She's in the house and they want her, I guess. Or do they, they just want her? Do they remind her of someone else oh, i don't think i mean they could i haven't spoken to them <laughs> but my my understanding is that they just want her they want to claim her for their her own another soul taken kind of thing uh -huh. but yeah that's that's one of the difficulties some people are saying it's so so many spirits but then you've got this demon floating around as well <laughs> and who's to say it isn't all the demon could be like you said collecting spirits. absolutely and presenting in a different way to not get caught everyone that passed in the house mm -hmm. was it a passing of disaster yeah there's been no sort of natural causes that i understand and as that other um medium person said the spirit Dark energy has been there for millennia. Is that causing these bad things to happen? Mm. And then all these spirits are getting attached through the bad things that happen. It's a very... I mean, if it is... I mean, I don't know what was there before, but it's a very odd plot of land to pick, isn't it? It's not like a domain. Yeah, it's, it's just a corner plot of a, just a, a house. Yeah. yeah, It's very unusual. I say unusual, I have no prior knowledge or dealings with to know that what then, the realm it could be but i mean it's just chance though isn't it we've discussed before that my previous residence was built on top of a asylum cemetery it's just one of those things that's true weird little uh box that used to open itself <laughs> oh yeah and the wall used to pop open no cause <laughs> I had a little person in the cupboard with a bit of string pulling it the whole time. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> in summary, we've probed the Hanover haunting. The Simpson family moved into a house in 2007, which was later found to have housed several tragic events, including murder. Things started pretty low level for the Simpsons. Orbs would appear in photos and there'd be the occasional apparition of Millhouse, but they thought nothing of it. Soon, a cat passed away and a lady approached Deanna Simpson in the garden, warning her that someone had died in the house before disappearing. Creepy. Poggy smells began stinking out the house and footsteps started being heard before doors began closing themselves. Next, Deanna would catch glimpses of blood and dead bodies in mirrors. Figures would visit Deanna in her dreams. It wasn't long before the rest of the family started experiencing these events and the family contacted a church minister who legged it out of the property, refusing to help them. Deanna brought in several paranormal investigators and discovered that the house had a portal in it and both spirits and possibly a demon were coming and going as they pleased. Journalists visited the house and picked up activity on film, including voices in recordings telling people to get out and a cameraman being physically scratched by an unseen force. 
eventually. It does appear that the family have been able to leave the house, but we don't know whether the spirits or entities followed them. There is an awful lot out there on these events. There is a book that goes into huge details about Diana looking down on herself whilst held against the ceiling in dreams and a bunch of folks picking up knocks and speech in recordings after visiting the house, for example, but I've tried to follow a rough timeline rather than just bombard with random events. Was this one a case of several spirits haunting the house or family? A demon? A hoax? Or some other paranormal entity entirely are you ready to conclude mr moonwalker i am are you saying that it was spookies yep he's in (laughs) (laughs) yeah i think what swayed me was the selling of the house and not for a ridiculous amount of money like it wasn't put on mm. for millions. It yeah. was right. Let's sell this house. And Things were fair. Get out. The shadow in the video. I'm not. I think that could have just been put in by the Fox team. I'm, I'm not sure. That, that looked a bit weird. Mm. Looked edited. But the door. That that is unusual. And it's really reliable too. Like that's frequently happening. Yeah, that door. I mean, it could have been string, but at the same time... They just don't feel like they would, do they? Mm. But it could have been, you're right. They don't feel like they would. What I would... I mean, I can't say it's what I would like to see, because you've gone through it all. You could turn around and just tell me this is all bullshit at the end. But... um If so many different crews have gone there and they've all experienced something different, Mm -hmm. everyone's experienced, well, not everyone, majority of people have experienced something when going there. Um, I would like to hear from the daughters saying that they wouldn't stay there, Mm. um, simply because the mother could just be saying it. I can't recall watching anything with the daughters in it, actually. But other than that... Mm, it's an interesting one yeah. and it's interesting to me how some cases just take off and go around the world and others like this one fly under the radar a little bit like don't get me wrong it's heard of but it's not like Amityville horror kind of thing Yeah. this one has an awful lot of activity and evidence but there haven't been all the books TV shows and movies and whatnot based on it well other than that book that investigator Joni Mahan ended up writing about in around 2020 and so, I listened to some interviews that Joni did alongside Deanna. Mm -hmm. But do I believe? It's hard for me to say I do when I specifically don't believe in ghosts. But then this doesn't have to be ghosts, does it? What really gets me is one thing that you haven't really touched on. It was kind of brushed over in the video I showed you. But two recordings were played they picked up voices saying get out and I've seen different recordings from different teams that have picked up that as well that's really hard to explain I thought that was fake so it's been repeated I thought that was the Fox they didn't do that no adding something in no they found that when they went back to edit things there was sounds in the background and like I say there's been other teams that have all had similar experiences now that bit, unless they've got some sort of tape recorder in the walls playing things, which is really hard to achieve and unlikely, I think, for this family. But they don't strike the, me as particularly tech. All the bric-a-brac and stuff they've got, it's quite easy to hide something. I just don't know that they'd have the technical ability to set that up reliably, do you know what I mean? It's, it sounds like a woman in the thing. Though. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they've, like I say, maybe the demons have genders, can't they change? Possible. Maybe the get out is uh, not get out because we want you out. uh, Get out to save yourself. One of the people who passed away in the house warning people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I say, I really want to say this one is spookies, but I also don't believe in spookies. So So it's a conflicting, but something... I'll say it for you. (laughs) It's spookies. (laughs) There is something unusual about this one. I'll go that far. Right, any final thoughts, Mr. Moonwalker? 
No, no, I'm good. And that is a wrap for today. Thank you for listening to But It Was Aliens, or is that But It Was Spookies? If you want to hear a little bit more, you can find our most outlandish content over at Patreon. Forward slash But It Was Aliens, where each month we release bonus episodes we call Side Probes. You can gain access to these episodes for quite literally less than a cup of coffee, but please don't tell the world what you hear. Also, tell all your friends to sign up, but don't tell anyone. And make sure everyone you don't know knows. You can share episode suggestions with us on the X Twitter at But It Was Aliens. You could also say hello on Facebook, where connected to But It Was Aliens is a secretly public private group called Extraterrestrial Towers. Being a member of Extraterrestrial Towers grants you protection from the aliens when they invade. It's been suggested that we are working with the aliens to clone and replace people one by one whilst their original bodies are farmed off world. But I can confirm that this is allegedly a truthful rumour. That is it for this episode, so until next time. Was Fox News originally about news involving foxes? The truth is up there. Hash tag.